peace and power, love and prosperity. You want and only Khonsu Sheshmu Amun, Team Osiris is always on the horizon. Our solution, man, our solution is, is revealed in science. Revealed in science all the time <laughs> and every time. And let, let me disambiguate some things. You know, we kind of enjoy a spirited conversation that's um, grown in the last few days. What we mean by science, and I'm not going to be the only one to expound on this, but we're not talking about academic science. I think a lot of people misconstrue that. We are the original people of the planet. We are beautifully black. We deal in the science of nature and the universe and how we're relative to it. Scientists study the, the um, occurrence and happening of science. The rain that falls from the sky, the sun that rises, the moon that moves in correlation to the earth. We study the elements on the earth. We study the phenomena of the earth. So the scientist is merely a, an observant and they observe and report. And they use a methodology to determine if what they've seen carries a fact. That fact is then correlated into the epistemology or what we call as humans, intelligence. But there's intelligence in all things. You're not gonna tell me a gorilla is not intelligent enough that if you walk in his territory, he come and meet you, greet your ass. That's intelligence. So we have to understand the forms in which that comes in. So in an African dichotomy, an African ontology, we have to understand the assimilation of those things when developing a pedagogy in an existing epistemology. We do have to understand those things. And so with Team Osiris, we take a no-nonsense approach to it. And we, we operate under the auspicity of a black flag because we will regulate those that pose danger to our community in the midst of false flag and then shape shifting. So these things happen and we entertain respectful dialogue and debate and, and you know, we've had, you know, an argument, I think a structured argument, it's not bad blood, um, with Asaya Motep and our brother Joshua Kane. And then and Joshua Kane went on his platform to discuss his book that can only be discussed a half hour at a time uh, with certain rules and regulations that was humbly followed. And now it is uh, transpired into whether this brother knows linguistics or not. Uh, we are peripheral investigators and primary researchers. Joshua never said he was a linguist. I saw him on TV. Um, so anybody's up for criticism and critique when they deem to be the expert and the professional, and you'll be held to that standard because we have the ability to read, write, and understand arithmetic. So we're going to criticize you in a, in a, a rightful fashion. So we're just going to entertain a discussion this evening and kind of disambiguate some misunderstandings because obviously we're not understood. Maybe, or maybe it's the other way around. So let's, let's, let's get some, some clarity here. We got brothers from Team Osiris, and I'll, I'll give the floor to the founder and uh, my brother, um, Ngozi. What up, bro? What's happening? Peace, man. What's happening? Peace, love. Peace and love to the family, man. What's going on with y'all, man? Life and love, man. Everything is good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, it um it, it definitely was a, a great bill that um that, that, that went on yesterday. I think Joshua did a beautiful job. Um I think he did good. Um I mean it was it was it was only popping. It was good to be um in a public to talk about real scholastic information when it comes to uh some real scholarship or the scholarship or whatever scholarship is when it comes to people of quote unquote of so called authority within their own right. I'll say that. And we were able to go backwards and forth on it. And um when it, the so called authority in, in the linguistic field or whatever. But either way we were able to go backwards and forward on it. And um I think that Joshua did a good job and I think that brother um Asar understands linguistics, uh the the, the field. He understands it, yet and still I think he's um very um, manipulative to a degree because he's able to find cracks of certain things and put it together the way he wants to. And as I said, you know, you can do that with any language, but that doesn't take away uh, his talent 
of being able to do that or his 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 under, his knowledge of knowing the field of linguistics because he do he 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 studies it but um I think he had his story very organized but it wasn't the truth and that's just what a, it's just a fact and I think brother Joshua he he hit him with he hit him with all the consensus he hit him with all the you know he critiqued him with all the information that he had too far as um showing his premise and standing on it, regardless of how the audience felt, he stood on it and he kept it flowing and going. And and, and that's that's what it was. So the bill was definitely powerful. And um I when I got on the after show or the after party after party show they pro, uh, pro posted, I got on there and I talked my piece and talked about, you know what I'm saying, um, um the migratory routes and different things and stuff stuff didn't add up. It didn't add up. They had the young lady on there from Kenya. She didn't know. Well, she seemed like she didn't know really where she was from. I mean, she knew she was Kenyan and Luau, but I guess she thought that she can try to like slip me up, and she couldn't because, as I said, the predominant the predominant population in Kenya has a specific feature compared to the lesser population. I brought up Somalians for a reason because Funk brought up African Americans, and it seemed like she didn't comprehend that. So if we was able to look at this, the ruling class of Kenya, you'll see the Kukuyus control it, and, they are, and the Kukuyus are Bantus. And you also had an overwhelming population of Nalotics there. And as Brother Gullah Geechee said, then even the Nalotics, or even that group of Nalotics from um, the Luau's, they also came, we'll talk about that a bit later in history, but overall, the overwhelming population of Kenya has a specific feature. So they kept trying to ask questions like, you know, did they have a, do, 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 do genes have a language? No. But people that carry these genes predominantly in certain areas speak a specific language. That's the whole thing. No genes does not have a language, but people that carry specific markers or specific type of genes speaks a specific language family, or they're part of a specific language family. For example, and I brought this up, and I don't think people understood it. When you go into Indo-European speakers, you follow their genetic trail, most of these people carry R1B and R1A. You go into Kenya, the predominant class is, you know, Sub-Saharan Africans. What genes are you going to find there? You're going to find EM2, the, the Bantus that control it, like the Kukuyus. You're going to find B. It, which which was which which was there from those melodic groups that came. You're gonna find you know a few A's, but you, you're also gonna find E3Bs because they were all you know E3B lingered around too because it was a Cushitic phase as well in Kenya. So you can see what's going on. You're gonna find this, but overall the ruling class, the Kukuyus are Bantu, and I think that one of the mother most important languages within Kenya, the families that they speak, uh, yeah, even the Somalis that go there have to learn to speak um, Swahili. What is Swahili? Swahili is a Bantu language. Not saying that the people don't speak multiple languages because they do, but there's a mother tongue that governs over the country, just like here in America. What is the mother tongue of America? Well, I mean, the, the, the national language that's spoken is English, but you got people that's here that's bilingual. You can't speak your other languages in certain, in certain um, areas within America and think you're going to get the job. You get what I'm saying? And that's the same thing that goes on in different parts of Africa. You got some countries in Africa where they speak French. And even though they speak their indigenous tongue, where the French is the dominant language, that's the language that they got to speak in order to get in certain positions that they got to get in. Or if they want to leave outside of the continent, where do most of these people go? Like uh, the ones that speak French go to France. The one, uh, other ones that's connected with the UK, that colonize them, they go into the UK. So what I'm saying is, and, and most people in the Horn of Africa who are predominantly Muslim or North Africa, they go into Saudi Arabia. They go into different parts of the Middle East. They network with these people. So what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I was just trying to prove, I'm not saying, and I never said, and I don't think they understood it, genes don't carry a language, but people that speak these languages have a common, have a specific common gene that functions the same, infinitely. Similarities, you can see it, you can see the genetic trail. And I think it was hard for them to um, get that, you know, they was able to alley hoop and throw the ball and, you know, do little, 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 little crazy shit and I couldn't go for that because it's common sense and if people follow the migratory route of humans as they say they do and they really believe in evolution they'll be truthful about this shit it doesn't make sense exactly. for it doesn't make sense for ancient Egyptians to speak a Bantu language any form of Bantu I mean it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all just looking at the modern population and the major genetic components that's there that they carry 
How the fuck do they speak a Bantu language? It's not even a trail of a genetic imprint, even in ancient times, of a Bantu phase in Egypt. Matter of fact, the Bantu speakers, um, their markers or their DNA is older than their language family, but they developed certain traits on the way before they even started into the Bindu, um, the Bindu regions of, of developing into Bindu Congo and going into the Bantu um, expansion when they went south and east of Africa. That was a recent transaction that occurred, and it's a genetic trail for that. But it doesn't make sense for ancient Egyptians when you start to study the timeline of ancient North African fossils and ancient genomes. You find the same genomes that you find in Egyptians today, specifically that EM78 marker, you find in early North Africa 12,000 years ago with the Iberian Marusians. You're not finding common genetic traits uh, 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 of Bantus in early North Africa. I'm talking about Iberian Marusians 20,000, 12,000 years ago. Yes, sir. Before the Capsian, before the Capsian group, you find that same marker, EM78, it's all up there. So if you want to go back and ancient test, that doesn't make sense. They don't even have any any similarity genetically that matches with Bantu speakers. And even the morphology isn't the same either. So I'm just saying, like, it, it, you know, the, the looking at the skulls, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. They don't even have common features of of, of Bantu speakers that you find in um in the in the Niger Congo areas. Not saying that you know it, it, you know a lot of traits phenotypically are recent adaptations and recent mutations are based off adjustment and time, but overall, you find the same genetic similarity with modern North Africans that you find with the ancient ones in, in ancient times. So they, they, they got to help make sense out of reality. And what they're saying now does not make sense. You go into India, you start finding, you know, the R1B and the R1A marker, you start to find what Indo-European came in. Because when they look at these, um, you know, around 3,000 years ago, compared to 4,000, 5,000 years ago, you look at the DNA, the Indo-European um, or the common the common genetic imprint that Indo-Europeans carry isn't there. It's absent in the Harappa civilization. But now there's a timeline based off looking at modern, looking at the genome of what time period did this R1B and R1A come in. And based off that, they can put together a conclusion of when the Indo-European language system came in because Hindi is a part of Indo-European linguistically in the language family hindi or sanskrit or hindi is part of the indo-european language family just like british spanish french you know and persian these are indo-european language family and most of these people that speak this specific language family major genetic uh major genetic um component that they carry not even component because component means peace but they're snip paternally which only makes up less than 1.1 percent of your DNA, but it makes up who you are as a man. That that imprint is R1B and R1A. You can see it. You can see the trail. It's found amongst all Indo-European speakers. Why? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So we got to make sense out of reality. And I'm gonna say it one more time: genes don't carry a language, but people that speak these languages have a certain type of gene. They have certain type of genes that's similar and they are leaving their genetic trail. And most of people that carry this R1B and R1A all speak or all are part of linguistically of the Indo-European language family. When you look at the people that speak so-called the classification, so-called Afro-Asiatic, you look at that genome, it's very similar. Well, so see. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. Well, it goes down. I, want, I, I want to make sure that everyone that's listening understands that part, because this is why we respect those that go and become trained and educated in fields of study. It's not just about being an autodidact and being able to um, comprehend it. You have to go through the rigorous testing. And it's a term called genealogical relationship that speaks to exactly what you're talking about. Because that genetic relationship, that genealogical relationship is not the layman's term to that, to that basic word compound. It's not, that's not it. Because we're talking about a language family. 
That is a group of languages related through descent from a common ancestral language or parental language called the proto-language of that family. So the term family reflects the, the tree model of language origination in historical linguistics, which makes use of, me of, of um, metaphorical comparisons. This is why you have to have a model of a comparative nature. So this is what we're talking about genetics because we refer to the language tree when they say language phylum. So you're misunderstanding what Ngozi is talking about because you think he's talking about biological genetics. That's an appeal to ignorance. It's not, it's not biological genetics because we're not talking biology. We're talking language phylums. It's just that Ngozi is talking over the heads of some cats. I'm just gonna keep it really honest. I'm gonna keep it what it is. That's just what it is. Because if any linguist that took the time to be trained, we're not linguists, but we know the research behind becoming one. Any linguist will understand genealogical adaptation of the term genetics when it talks about relationship in linguists, in linguistics. So this is where that misunderstanding comes in and goes. I just wanted to make that clear. Because people try to twist and turn what, you, what you're saying to fit an isolate paradigm. No, we're talking pure intelligence here. We're not talking that foolishness with the trickery of the words. If you haven't really been trained, you wouldn't know that. You would think layman, oh, he talking about biology. No, he's not. When we use the genetic markers, it's because the genome has been mapped. So now we're able to correlate those things into linguistics because of genealogical relationships that are established through lingua franca and language phylums. Mm. But you're talking like somebody is dumb, you're talking down, like nobody can read. And no, see, the problem is it's called school. Is, is, is Brother Joshua here? Because I, I wanted to, but before Joshua and goes, go ahead, man. I didn't want to cut your wisdom. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, because you said that before and it's gotten twisted around. So go, go ahead, Brother Ngozi. I'm sorry. Is Brother Ngozi still there? Go, go, uh, I'm right here. What you say, King? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I said I had cut your wisdom. I just wanted no, you to cut, no, 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 no. You didn't cut my wisdom. You didn't, no, you did, you did an excellent job. I mean, you, 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 you're telling the truth. I think that those guys are, are disingenuous. I think that they, they, they also made up a, a lie and said that the comparative method between other Afro-Asiatic languages uh, don't exist. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, I, I'm sure Brother Asar said that. Also, they said that uh, Christopher Eric wasn't a linguist. They just, it's just, it's just they just find little leaks and just manipulate things. Can, uh, can I just I, think it's... Can I say go one ahead. thing? Go, it's funny you mentioned Christopher Eric. Let, let me... Uh -huh. Let me, let me read this verbatim. This is from um, internationalucla.edu forward slash Africa dash person forward slash 182. This is the personnel from the University of California. University, UCLA, African Studies Center. Christopher Eric is a degreed linguist. I heard what Jawu say he wasn't, so he used an equivocation fallacy to put Asar in the same box as Christopher Eric. Respectfully, Asar couldn't wear Christopher Eric's boxes on, on a bad day. <laughs> Christopher Eric is a professor mm -hmm. of African history and African historical linguistics. See, what it is, you don't realize that when you go to college, you have to major in something and then carry a minor to support Woo. But if you didn't take your ass to school, you wouldn't know that. You think that it's just like going to high school. No, you need prereqs, and then you have to take that major, and then that major qualifies you, and the minor substantiates your degree, which gets you a PhD, because you got to go before fellows. Huh? Woo! So now when we're talking uh. about linguistics, he focuses on linguistic taxonomy and reconstruction with archaeological record. So he's published eight books and over 70 scholarly articles on this stuff. And he goes into the intrinsic side 
of linguistics because his main focus is African history. So he has the right to discern and talk about Bantu, no matter if you see blue eyes and blonde hair, because he's focused in that study. And he's focused on a period from 1000 BC to 408 AD. The, and, he, and, he, and he focused on the African classical age, and he wrote a book on it, a treatise in 1998. So now, a person with this kind of resume, you can't minimize that. Okay, he deals in reconstructing proto-Afro-Asiatic. He just didn't purport Afro-Asiatic. He reconstructed it from a proto-perspective using the comparative method that's a requirement for aptitude in linguistics. He did that in 1995. How old were you in 1995? He did that in 1995. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I don't, that's, I don't, that's I, powerful. I don't understand how you belittle somebody like that to fit your paradigm. That's mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, respect. That's I mean, I mean, his exaggeration with the Sumerians is no different than I'm just adding on. It's no different than these Hebrews. And he opens up the doorway for people that's Hebrews and Middle Eastern fanatics. Because I mean, my thing is, you, now you're saying it's the Sumerians with Bantu speakers as well, dude. The artwork, the certain things, <laughs> studying certain tra they don't they, they don't look shit like Bantu speakers. The the the, the artwork, the way that the way that they did things. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't look nothing like that. They have nothing in common. I mean, it's, it's just really like bad. And it's like, you're no different. You guys criticize the Hebrews, but y'all doing the same shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all, y'all got the, y'all, 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 y'all are into Egypt, this Egypt mania shit. And then you do it. Then you claim the Sumer is bad. So everything's bad too. Just like just like these Hebrews can say everything is Hebrew, or somebody can say everything is Moorish, y'all saying everything is fucking Bantu. Well, not all of them, but him specifically. Why? Why would you say that? that? Doesn't even make sense. So his whole way of doing things is no different than a Hebrew or more. He just Bantu nods it. That's all mm -hmm. he did. They yeah, they understand. Oh, go ahead, Kay. Oh, I was just gonna say it's emotional. It's it's an overcorrection to the biblical scholars, right, that they, that they try to go against and whatnot and that are offended by. So they overcorrecting and end up doing the same thing that these biblical scholars was doing back in the day. Right. And then, and then, and then on top of that, right. And then on top of that, we talk about 1995 until now, but we got these guys using methodology that's from the 60s and the 70s before certain technologies were introduced so that we could use several different fields together, right? Archaeology, anthropology, genetics, linguistics, and so on, in order to come to a conclusion about who a people are. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, so in his talk, in Asar's talk, he was trying to limit it to, this is just a linguistic conversation. But that's, that's a fallacy as well, because for him to use the word Negro Egyptian in his claim, that's a genetic claim right there. See what I'm saying? So it's no longer just linguistics. When you say, oh, it's Negro Egyptian, you're trying to say it's a black Egyptian that gave words to these Semitic speakers. See what I'm saying? So Brother Asar is indeed making a genetic claim. It's not just a linguistic claim. And then he's he, he's not using the, the technologies that are here now right, that, that Christopher Ayer is using and other people are using that you have to use nowadays in order to substantiate what you're saying about the relation between different groups and what languages they spoke and where those languages might have came from. So they use an outdated technology, you see what I'm saying, to, to pass off this yeah. argument and they're trying to limit the argument so that they can't be falsified, right, but the thing is, we in 2019, we in 2020 now, actually. So you yeah. can't do that. You can't do that anymore and limit a conversation to just linguistic, especially if you're going to cherry pick and then go back and try to use uh, other fields that in favor of what you're trying to say while trying not to use those other fields when it's not in favor of what you're trying to say. 
and, 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 yeah, and add on, they know that we know what they're doing, but they're so manipulative because I guess we don't express it the way they want to express it. It's all about expression. You feel me? They want to play games and play and, and get in your head and do reverse psychology games and say this ain't that and this ain't that. But dude, like you know what's being said. You guys just feel that we're not expressing ourselves in the in 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 the, in the manner that you want to correct you. So what y'all do is when y'all see loose ends, if we're not expressing or delivering what we're trying to say the way you want it to, this is when you say, they don't comprehend good. They don't do this. Team Slow Cyrus and making up dumb shit. No, you know exactly that we know what you are, what you all are doing. But, you, but you're playing games. You get what I'm saying? True indeed. You, just because you, 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 you leave that gate open, because again, like I said yesterday, if you don't follow all the methods of linguistics, that shit alone is hypothetical. And he's dealing with it from a hypothetical angle, reconstructing languages, mixing and matching, finding certain words that, you know, through reconstructing it and using the comparative method. He's doing that when he knows that gaps are, or gaps are there, where it's hypothetical anyway. But once you start putting the archaeology and dealing with genetics and putting it all together with it, it's a fucking wrap. And as I said yesterday, man, ge- genetics is the nail in the coffin, man. You know what I'm saying? Because these people that speak these languages have genes. And most of their genes from the languages that they speak are common. You can see it. Most, of, most like I said, most Indo-European speakers have a common genetic trait. You can see it all through, the, all through, all through them, from Persia to Iran, all the way through India, all the way through, you know, the, the, through Eurasia, all the way through Europe, you can see the genetic trail. You can see it. Afro-Asiatic, from the Levant, all the way through North Africa and the Horn, you can see it. Niger Congo speakers, you can see it all the way from Mali, all the way down through Cameroon, Angola, all the way down through Tanzania and Uganda from when those Bantus kept, or when the Bantu speakers start to expand, all the way down. You can see the genetic trail. You can see the EM2. You can see the sickle cell, you know, the sickle cell, the sickle cell that they developed when they were in the wet Sahara at one time, when they developed it 7,000 years ago. You can see it. Either it's the trait or you can see them having it to help them, that they developed it to help fight off malaria. You can see it. North Africans, Middle Easterns, back then you could see the uh, lactose consistent gene or the LCT gene. They were able to digest milk because they dealt with a lot of milk. You can still see that compared to us. We can't even handle milk. You look on the walls in Kemet, you see these niggas drinking from Hut Hedu or drinking from Matut, Nick Hunt, which is a cow goddess. They're drinking milk. That ain't what niggas in the Congo was doing. That ain't what niggas in Mali was doing. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, his brother Gullah say, and his brother Gullah Geechee say, you know, the Fulani, and he was correct. They they got their lactase consistent gene from 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 from, from Europeans. Tishkoff said that, even though the Fulani were pastoralists and they dealt with with cows, they wasn't don't dealing go, with the cows the same way. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm gonna leave that alone because I'm Fulani. I'm gonna leave that alone. But I'm just gonna say this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just say this. But 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 a lot of people in West Africa, you can look at the diets. Human leukoantigens, you know, which is their immunities. I ain't just talking no weak ass haplogroup group shit. That's the old Ngozi. <laughs> Nigga, I'm fucking with human leukoantigens now. I'm dealing with immunities. I'm dealing with limb proportions. And I ain't talking about no tropical limb proportions. I also deal with body breaths. And, you know, I, I, I do this. I'm that. I'm not dealing with that shit just alone. If that's what you think, dude, and it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense what you guys are doing. You you know all about evolution now, uh, when it comes to evolution and how cells form, understand vaccines, understand all this. But when it comes to this fucking Egypt and this and this Bantu shit, that's when y'all start to become pseudo. That's yeah. when you become pseudo. Yeah. And that yeah. feel right there, and that makes you no different than the Hebrews or the other people because y'all should know better. Y'all understand evolution, but y'all but when it comes to Kemet and their language, this is when y'all become pseudo. No. Yeah. You guys are the organized. You guys are the organized liars, as you say in that field, and you try to defeat an unorganized truth. So if the truth isn't expressed the way y'all want it to be expressed, y'all organized lie drown it out. That's some slick ass shit, man. That's reverse psychology. I see what the fuck going on. Period. Well, see, you know what it goes. What's interesting? What supports your claim? Since they think we don't study. What you don't understand is Team Osiris is a premier study group. We take pride on being extremely intelligent and undoubtedly black. That's the problem. 
this is what this is what you don't understand. What Ngozi is talking about, because sometimes I see you got to kind of see Ngozi does it naturally. Ngozi like Jordan. He just gonna he just gonna do what he do. So let me let me say this to to satisfy those who think it's just Freestyle Friday. That's supported by the genetic structure and history of Africans and Afri African American and, and uh, African Americans. That's in a science. That's in a magazine called Science, Volume Three Twenty Four, published in on May twenty second, two thousand nine. The collaborators were Sarah A. Tishkoff, Floyd A. Reed, F. R. Friedlander, and Christopher Eric. Christopher Eric joined the team because he realized he had to go into a new direction after he reconstructed Southern Cushitic phonology and the vocabulary associated with it back in nineteen eighty. See, he's written monographic articles, not just articles, monographic articles on Bantu reconstruction of Proto-Cushitic and Proto-Eastern Cushitic. Okay, because he follows the construct of a linguist. You understand that? He not just freestyling. He had to, he had to go and classify the, the Somali languages and the reconstructions around that to be able to do that. So then he had to collaborate with others that would support the field of linguistics. He had to develop the mathematical tools for dating linguistic history. He did that with Andrew Kitchum, Christopher Eric, Shin Shinferu Asada, who's off the chain, Connie Mulligan, with Bayesian um, phylogenic analysis of Semitic languages. They used the Bayesian theorem which identifies an early Bronze Age origin of Semitic in the Near East. That, that publication is called The Proceedings of the Royal Society, B. Biological Sciences, July 2009. Those are all the sources to back up what Ngozi is saying. So don't think it's just some made up shit. We, this was a discussion. It, was, it, it wasn't, if you reach, we'll teach. But this was a discussion. It started out a discussion. When nobody yep. embarrassed or nothing, no, you were being respected. Like we're supposed to respect each other. But mm -hmm. to question somebody is if they're slow or they can't comprehend. Come on now. Oh. Come on now. We're team Osiris. That team. that's deflective tactic. Now that's all the that's 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 20, that's almost 40 years of study supported what Ngozi's saying, and Ngozi just said it. And you know, and, and you know, that's, that's and, I, and, and 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 I heard the um, or heard of you know the 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 uh, the rebuttal this morning. Um, brother Garfield had a show, and you had brother uh, Sean and 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 all these people on there, and they talking about we 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 didn't go did a uh, team on size, but they embarrassed for what? Embarrassed for what? Like, 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 I don't like my thing is that like they try to drown people out so bad. How, how the fuck are we a bit that did you brought up the, the, the sister? That sister didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. That's why she went in the corner and got quiet. I, she kept trying to ask me the same shit in different ways, and I kept giving her the same answer. It's not my fault people can't keep up with the, what, what the fucking Gozi is saying. And your little fans at the bottom of it is saying, oh, and Gozi got, he got, how, how? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what, huh? Do you comprehend? I mean, we got to get out of this, uh, out of this fan shit and become logical thinkers and, and see shit clearly. Like, do you comprehend and, and, and understand what the fuck I was saying? The lady mm -hmm. couldn't keep up and none of them couldn't keep up. And I went in that motherfucker like a gladiator and it was out of passion, not emotion. Well, I could say emotional because I'm emotional about this information, but I wasn't disrespectful. I just went in like a fucking drill sergeant and I calmed down. I didn't disrespect nobody. So why are you people talking crazy? Oh, were they embarrassed for what? No, we're not embarrassed. We know what the fuck is going on. We see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Are you embarrassed? Because you have to continuously talk about it to make yourself feel some type of way because you're not mm -hmm. certain. Psychologically, you're not certain. You're not, you're not, you're not a strong believer that you guys really did good. So you're going to yes. keep dragging it on, talking about it all. You have to convince yourself. You have yes. to lie to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, come on, bro. The placebo effects ain't working, man. That shit trash. It's trash, yep. man. Yep. Come on, man. Let me also say. Oh, go ahead, brother. 
let me let me also say these tactics and i know you probably was gonna say the same thing or something like it these tactics that they use and ironically right these afrocentric people who are so pro uh afrocentric and so anti-european and so on and so forth they're using some of the same tactics that europeans have used to deceive people over this whole time these millennia these thousands of years that they've been doing this stuff uh the same drowned out tactics uh speaking over uh belittling talking uh, around in circles to get away from the point and try to confuse people and try to play reverse psychology and tell people they don't understand when they really do these are all textbook tactics right that the oppressors have used and here here we are finding ourselves uh with these guys using these same tactics and so so i just wanted to, to get that out there these are tactics that are being used and the people that are trained they got a trained ear they already know this they, we saw them in the chat room they was already calling it out for what it is but it's a lot of these fanboys who don't know why they agree with asar but they're just agreeing because they should agree right those people don't understand that they're being hoodwinked that they're being taken advantage of by well, we charlatans with spurious information right that, that this is what's truly happening out here you know well, and the other, the, the, the other, you know, the other thing i, I wanted to I'm say saying, oh go I'm ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead no i was i was going to say because the brother in goldie was pointing out how these guys are celebrating like they had some great victory. Now, what are you celebrating? Because um, Asar himself already stated that it was not a debate. So you, people are, are saying, oh, the brother Joshua Cain lost. How did he lose? And there was no competition. There was no debate. Good what point. Was, yes, sir. What it was, was Asar and Hotep using a, the old pull the rabbit out of the hat trick. You know, basically, he facilitated right. an illusion. You know, see, Asar was already preparing to do a response to Joshua Kane. He's been preparing for three years. And he was going to wait to do that response, right? But clearly, Joshua Kane's last two videos obviously bothered Asar's piece. And then the interaction he and I had on social media got to him even more, right? And so then this cunning black brother moves up his timeline to disrespect, to label, and to paint brother Joshua to seem a fool. He even said it himself. He said it himself. He said that his aim and his purpose would be to call brother Joshua, number one, illiterate, and number two, to huh. call Brother Joshua stupid, but to up the insult, he wanted to disrespect, he wanted to insult the brother That's in right. his face and in public. That's right. And he got away with it. And the way he got away with it is, see, when you take into consideration that it's been three years since the Brother Joshua challenged Asar's work, Right? And the community began to notice that, hey, there's something fishy going on with this assault. Right? And then you consider how, even before three years ago, there was some bad blood between, you know, their clique and the team. Now, That's right. jump to the other day, fast forward to the other day, where everyone is aware of this. And now you see a Team Osiris member. Who, who happens to be myself, going back and forth with Asar on a post in which Asar tagged me so I can see his lies and make-believe about me, right? And then on this post, you see the brother Asar says, here's what I'll do. I'll bring Cain on my show so we can talk. And so now to the onlookers, they're thinking, oh, finally, after all this time, Team Osiris and the Amara squad are going to face off, like it's a debate. Even though in the brother Asar's setup, he mentioned that it was not a debate, that it is only to um, um, reply to the brother Joshua Kane's critique of 
um, his book from three years ago. Now, see, that whole frame right there, that whole setup was nothing but um, a, a, a mirror behind which to perform his prestidigitation, right? And, and basically what he did was he knew the people was going to be excited to see the two teams coming face to face, and he used that to hide behind his true intentions, which is what he, he, he actually stated in his, his post, which was to call the brother stupid and, and to say the brother can't read. And you can count how many times he did that in his video, but he did it subtly. He basically presupposed or implied it. And then by using his pseudo demonstration that he put on, it gave it gives the impression that, hey, Asar is correct. See, he can play those games with the 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 unassuming Idiot. audience or those who aren't aware, but he can't do it with all of us. That's right. That's right. And, my, and, my, and most of the audience is, and I'm going to say this, and I don't give a fuck how nobody feel. Most of the audience is stupid. Most of the audience is dumb as fuck. Some of them audience members are people that we kicked out of the fucking Team Osiris page and group, bro. They dumb. Like, they, they already got animosity. No one likes Ngozi because they think that I just dis I'm disrespectful. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I pull out fuck shit. When I see fuck shit, I pull it out and I just correct it. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just very upfront about how I do things. I'm not going to be docking, ducking, and dodging. Like, 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 don't get mad at me. You, you motherfucker, sit on Team Osiris page. Try to watch what we do. Y'all on my page trying to watch and see what I'm saying. And, and, and then try to talk shit. Like, what, what, what is the point? What is the purpose? I mean, you got to be a miserable person. Person, I don't worry about y'all. I don't focus on y'all. I don't think about y'all. I'm chilling. Team Osiris is chilling, yo. So I just hey, think bro. it's, like, really sad. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, King. I'm saying, but I'm going to say that. I'm like, most of the people, like you were saying, like, they just fans, man. It's like. They like church members. They don't go along with yeah. any, anything the congregation say or go along with. They just follow. Love. Most of the motherfuckers that bought their book, they wait. Y'all waste y'all money for real. Cause most of y'all don't even understand this shit that's going on in that book. And it's a bunch of bullshit. He did, like a song, he wrote a whole, he wrote a whole book of showman's toilet paper. Real shit. Hey, that that's exactly. true, Gucci. They hey, they don't know exactly. why they agree with Brother Asar. I seen a guy. Uh, he said he just got the book today. And he already read the book and he said that it's the greatest book or, you know, he was, he was playing it up <laughs> like it, it was some miracle or something. Now, if that don't tell you uh, about the, 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 the false uh, cheerleading that's going on here, I don't know what will because nobody gets a book and reads it the same day and then comes to the conclusion that it's the greatest book and, put in, and says this online and tags the author. That that's not how and, it works. And, and and also the bullshit with the just because you wrote a book, you're a scholar. People make bullshit books all the time. You got two hundred page pseudo books that's going around right time in the new age section. That shit bullshit. Deepak Indeed. Chopra. He's he say he's a scientist. He got this new age shit, self healing shit. A lot of shit he write is bullshit. He got books that's two hundred pages, three hundred pages. That doesn't make you a scholar or legit because you write a book. People write book on books on bullshit all the time. You're only yeah. a scholar amongst your circle. You're not a scholar to mainstream academia. No one recognizes you. Then you want to bring up these silly ass, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but these Afrocentric ass, silly ass continental Africans who base shit off oral tradition, and they don't even know shit. They don't, they're not even in the science field. They base shit off what their family told them, and they have a little education, and they believe that they're the scholastic, they're the scholastic teachers of everything else, and everything else that other people are saying in society is wrong. You know, I got to with a few Bantu speakers on my personal page. They got mad because I used the term Bantu. And I'm, I'm trying to tell them, what's wrong with calling y'all Bantu? I understand it's a European term that label all y'all based, and it means people or man. But linguistically, this, this branch or phase of Bendu Congo within a Niger Congo language family, y'all have a specific trail. In y'all in y'all level of speaking in y'all language that goes from Angola to Cameroon all the way through Tanzania and, and the Zulus, you have a trail linguistically where you can see the, the syntax and cognizance where it matches. You can see the comparative methods. So why would you I mean so if we want to label that one bunch as Bindu Congo or or, or 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 Congo, whatever, whatever you want to call it, it's a trail from where y'all come from genetically, we can see it. Based on where y'all come from, it's there. Biologically, genetically, you can see the trail. And outside of biology, lingui I mean, outside of genetics, linguistically, we can see the trail. And we can see it genetically. Once you put it together, what's the problem? 
So you got these people who run around here basing things about oral tradition. One brother say, I'm not Zulu. I mean, I'm not Bantu. I'm Zulu. I'm not. And another person say, I don't like that term. That's European terms. But, but do you know why Europeans came up with this? Do you know why? You know, the reason why the Europeans are able to do what he do everywhere is because he maps shit out and make it easier for himself. You niggas want to be complicated. You niggas want to be divided. You niggas want to be separated. You niggas want to be different. And that's why we're in a situation that we're in, because y'all want to find ways to make things way more complicated than what the fuck it is. When the white boy come on the scene and say, hey, you know what? These niggas in Cameroon speak just like those niggas down there in South Africa and those niggas over there in Tanzania and those niggas in, oh, you know what? We're going to call these motherfuckers man, people. Well, we're going to call them Bantus. They're your Bantus. And he made it easier for himself to be able to map y'all ass out. And he got y'all figured out, but instead you want to say, oh, no, I'm, I am Zulu. I am Axia. No, 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 no. I'm from Angola. I don't, I don't like that term. Well, okay, but you're making it complicated for yourself, but the European came in and mapped all y'all ass out and understand how this continent works going in and out and how people function. It's mm. easier for him. And I'm not saying, you know, it's wrong with the European dude, but he's a, he's a great manipulator. He finds ways to make it out. It, he makes it convenient for himself, just like the term Africa. Yes, we know in ancient times the term Africa didn't exist for the whole continent, but he made it easy for himself. And, and, and when he did that, he was able to go in and take over all the borders that he wanted to and separate you to make it easier for himself. But instead, we run around here saying, oh, no, I'm not African. That ain't what we used to call ourselves. But right now, that's what y'all, that, that right now, that's what y'all labeled as. And right now, y'all need to find some type of common ground to stick together, you know what I'm saying, to oppose what's going on. With, 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 with real racist white supremacy that's going on globally. Or, and then white supremacy isn't just pale face anymore. White supremacy got all colors of the rainbow working for it now. And they got one common goal, to do what they're going to do to get them to stand on the bricks to be able to control the world resources to the best of their ability. And you got black funkies as part of it, and you got Palestinians as part of it, all types of weird-looking people, regardless. They're all part of the same nation, the same circle. So what I'm saying is, is that we, we get caught up in this shit. And what, I'm, what Asar is doing, he's trying to make shit more complicated than what it is. He's trying to say you can't use this for your preparative method. You can't use that. Afro-Asiatic doesn't exist. You know, he's trying to make it harder. And I'm trying to let the audience know, hey, man, this shit ain't hard. It's easy. Follow the simple terms that's being used. And once you get to the simple terms, if you follow the genetic trail, you'll have a clear understanding of what the fuck is going on. Now we can talk. The complication should come later. But we ain't got time for the complication. And that's what they're doing. They're keeping things divided and controversial and keeping complications going. And this is why we can't organize. Because that mm. shit they're doing is not organizing anything. That's all I mm. want to say. Yeah, you know, I kind of, you know, and Gozi, this is some, I, 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 this is really powerful stuff we're talking because it, it I heard, let, let's talk about Dr. Campbell. Let's talk about this uh, gentleman named Dr. Campbell. This is a young African brother who teaches at the University of Ghana. And I heard, <laughs> I heard Brother Saw downplay this guy as if Cambone is some fly by night guy. This brother has a PhD in linguistics at the University of Ghana. He, he, he won the Vice Chancellor's Award. That's one of the top awards in linguistics for the best PhD thesis. And his thesis was in humanities. He won the 2006 Provost Publication Award for best article in the College of Humanities. He's a recipient of the Marcus Mazaya Garvey Foundation Award for Excellence in African Studies and Education. He's a senior research fellow, research fellow and head of the language literature department. I, I, I don't see how someone like this cannot be given honor and respect because I know that I didn't achieve that. I got to respect. I'm not going to hate on somebody because I don't have it. I'm not going to belittle somebody. Education is primary. Education is primary. It is not something that you just overlook. 
In America, in our paradigm of African ancestry, our ancestors died for an education. So you cannot say African power and not give credit to those who paved the way for you to read books like Thurgood Marshall, W.B. Du Bois, Martin Luther King, Sojourner Truth, Bethune Cook. You can't overlook those people who worked hard to understand academic excellence. That has to be respected to a degree. That is very important that we understand that. And when I hear other black folk play the talented 10th game under Afrocentricity, it's a doggone shame. How can, you, mm. how can Dr. Cambone be reduced to a, this whatever? Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. I just... You, 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 you know what? You know what? And I'm going to add on. There's a division going on in the Armour squad, and I don't think y'all see it, but they got to save face. You know, they got to look out for one another. First of all, I don't know the truth. I don't know what's going on. I don't know it. You know, that's why I ain't even going to speak on that, brother. Shout because out. yeah, shout out to Unc because he know what's going on, but he's not. But he got to play. He got to aid. He's playing a team player, so I ain't got. I ain't got no disrespect for the brother. But what I'm saying is, is that Garfield know what's going on too. Garfield know that that, that fucking Sumerian shit and that Egyptian shit don't add up with what Asar is saying. But they got to play safe face. They got to yeah, play this he game. He spoke on that today. He said it didn't line up, but he he said he also kind of added himself. They're playing safe, saying, "Hey, I'm not a linguist, so they'll take my word for it." But, right, uh, right. But, but he know he know it don't line up. It doesn't make sense, and that's just common sense. Also, you know, they 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 not all of them, but for the most, they want to call black people stupid. They want to belittle the community off the foolishness and different things that we have taught in the past, especially like the metaphysical circles or whatever. Those people, that's how these people, if somebody, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, man. You, you, to a degree, you got to be some type of hater to go out your way and try to stop people currency or money from flowing in. They got families to make yourself look superior and make the next brother look bad. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. You can educate a person without calling them stupid. You know what I'm saying? You can have your own lane and make this money within the community, just like the other people, because some of these people don't want to work a job. This is how they give. This is how they eat. This is how they pay themselves. They write books. They do certain things. They got a following. Why antagonize them and beat them up or take what they got away to try to make them look bad so you can look like you on top and get the money? I understand it's a doggy dog world, but at the end of the day, it, this shit based off capitalism and it's bullshit. And I understand we got to have debates, but the debates got to be more educated than that. You get what I'm saying? They come oh, yeah. in, they, they, they want to be disrespectful, they want to call black people stupid. One part of them is Afrocentric, but another part of them isn't really Afrocentric if you really pay attention to them. They want to call all the elders that came before them dumb, but they can't do that publicly because they got to play safe face. They, they actually agree with most of mainstream academia that's predominantly Europeans. I'm just saying, that's because it's not enough of us to know in none of these fields. People that look like me and you, it's not enough of us in these fields compared to, so, so they agree with most of what they say. You got Afrocentric, not, listen, I'm not anti-vax, so let me get that straight, I'm just saying. And I'm not also Afrocentric, I'm centered in Africa, but I'm not Afrocentric, I'm not even a racist, so it, let's get that out the way. But you got a pair, you got Afrocentrics, who's Supreme Bantus, that's pro-vax, and they agree with all the things that mainstream academia say, but when it comes to this Egyptian shit, it's banned to and I'm pro African. But they don't got enough sense. And, uh, and, uh, they say, I just say, yeah. I just, hey, they pull hey, the hey, autodidact hey, card. Hey, yo, yo, yes, sir. I want to set the, ahead, I wanna set the, I wanna set, set the record straight live, too. Uh, Unc, Unc was on that, I don't know who show it was, Sean Show or whatever. He was saying that he had played part in, he played part in the, uh, the creation of Team Osiris, and that ain't true. Yeah, he gave us the platform. No. But I'm giving, but in Gozi, Gozi and Khufu came up with that on their own, and they came to me. I was the first recruit in Team Osiris, and Consul, he right. been there. Consul, I was been That's right. Member. He was there the first That's day right. he formed it. Uh, uh, That's Gozi right. And Gozi called me. We used to rock out on yes. our squad all the time. Just beat yes. motherfuckers on there. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. See, but brother, what brother uh, Unk did, he allowed us to become part of the Amon Ross squad matrix. And yeah, what happened yeah. was is that he, he what happened what. 
he gave us the platform. What happened was Unk told everybody to formulate sex sex groups to, to be part of the matrix. He had the real black atheist movement, and then he had the um the Mossy Warrior Clan. They had another name before that. And then they had um um, um brother um the rapper, the brother um Jonathan Owens had the Magi. And I, I just thought, shit, Osiris, Team Osiris. And I told my brother Khufu with it, and Khufu came up with the acronym, One Soul Amply Resurrected in Spirit. And then, and then, and then Khufu got the, um, he got the website done, and we put it together. And then, again, Consul, um, Consul was there, Brother Gullah Geechee was like the first brother, because I was, that was the first brother that was demonstrating with it, and we came together, and then we and got inserted. We, 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 we had Brother Cameron, too. You know, with us. We had Brother, we had Brother, we had, we had Cameron. He still yeah, we had Cameron. Yeah, he still found We had Cameron. We had um the, the the Jamaican brother. I forgot his name. He lives in New York. We had a few brothers with us before they um uh, before they all faded out in, in different things. But yeah, so no, he had no he had nothing to do with creating Team Osiris. We created Team Osiris. He just allowed us to be part of the Amon Ra Squad Matrix. So if you want to say that he had a hand in that, that area, yeah, but you didn't create Team Osiris. I thought about Team Osiris. Khufu thought about the acronym, and then I created a later acronym, which which is what we say now. You know, our solution is revealed in science, and we still use Khufu, uh, Khufu, and then and then Khufu added the black flag to it. So everybody mm-hmm. as a collective, we're, we're, that's part of Team Osiris, built built up Team Osiris from the base all the way to what it is now. Kansu added stuff to it. Gullah Geechee added to it. Everybody did collectively. That the, the members that's here now. So for him to just say that. That's 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 kind of bogus. But if he's trying to say he had a hand in it for allowing us to have the platform, yes, Unk did. I, I can admit to that. He did give us the platform, but he did not create Team Osiris. It was never an Osiris thing that came out of his mouth. So let me get that straight. But he did give us the platform for us to be able to speak and do what we do through the audience because we were part of the Amon Ra Squad matrix, and I was a member of Amon Ra Squad. Mm-hmm. That's hey, you know, you know, you know, Ngozi, you right, man, when you say Unk know that that, that, that mess of saw is talking is garbage because last night on his broadcast, he asked the question. He did it in a slick way. He asked, <laughs> could it be that the reason why people are saying the saw is wrong is because they are reading his works? Could it be that when they read his works, and then they go and look at the sources that he tells them to go look at, and they don't see things matching up. Could that be the reason? That's a question he kind of slid out there. I'm like, yeah, that's. that's- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I can't do nothing, you know, with respect on what he got to say face because that's what's going on. But at the end of the day, I don't know what's going on. He know, he know what's up, man. That man know he ain't no damn Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? And it's a and it's a cognitive dissonance thing for the for them as a collective because you got this name, y'all stuck with it, you know what I'm saying? And then you know y'all got these com- comedic names and not we not knocking comedic names, we call ourselves Team Osiris. We actually call ourselves Team Osiris on purpose in the Greek way and not the so-called comedic way, you know, because the acronym that we have is amazing. So we're not trying to be Egyptians. It's, 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 it's not, we're not trying to be Egyptian. We're, 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 we we understand we're we're humanists. We understand Pan-Africanism. We understand it as a whole. And we're not trying to be Egyptian. So it's purposely Greek on purpose for those that say, these niggas calling themselves out there Greek. Yeah, the Greeks was dope. Don't get it twisted. You feel me? But, but, but whatever. So, uh, it, it, you know, he, they, they know what's going on, man. And they see yeah. it. And, and we're, like a, we're like a fly that's around their head. And it's like irritating them. So they got a safe face and make these long videos and make us try mm-hmm. to make us look bad and call us illiterate and stupid. I mean, that's all part of the game. You know, they do what they got to do. But at the end of the day, if we can reach out of 10 people, if we can reach one or two, we doing our job. Because if that's we right. someone down the line, y'all all going to learn. We ain't even trying to reach everybody. Team Osiris, we never draw up numbers. You know, it could be 10 of us against 1,000 people. We going to fight. That's just, the, that's just what we do. That's just the method of the street Sufi. Whether it's verbal or whether it's physical, we're going to go. Because that's how we pump. Period. Yes, so it is what it yes, is, yo. That's true Brother warrior Joshua. spirit. Brother Joshua. Yeah. Are you there, Brother Joshua? I don't know if you're able to speak. I think he might he might be tied up right now. Yo, well, peace. I am here. 
Oh, oh peace, brother John. Brother. I want to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, go ahead, bro. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna put your business out there too much. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Did you uh? Did you just happen to be a fly by night YouTuber that just study on the internet? I, 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 did you go to school? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I graduated 2019 from Troy University. Huh? My, uh, yeah, I, I graduated from uh, Troy University. This ain't no Ali uh, Muhammad shit. You did? Oh, no, I don't no, know. No, ain't none of that shit. Okay. <laughs> My, what, what was your major? <laughs> Uh, major was uh, psychology, uh, minor in sociology. Wait, and, wait, uh, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Huh? So what degree of of uh, accreditation did you receive, sir? Uh, bachelor's. The okay. bachelor's degree in All right. um, the psychology. You know. So it was being argued that you didn't comprehend methodology. <laughs> How does one get a degree at the college level on whatever subject matter if one doesn't understand methodology and structure? That's a good question. Uh, if I didn't understand methodology, I probably would have flunked out of college, you know what I'm saying? Now, you I humbly know. didn't even mention that. So he's talking to a degreed individual in psychology and sociology. Something he fails in. He's terrible. He's a terrible sociable person. I don't even know. He is, he don't like people. I don't know what's up with that. That, that might be it. Asad's just a mean guy. I, maybe you got to really get to know him. Okay. Oh, I think I got you. I got you. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Yo, I, yeah, yeah I just want to say, I'm going to say this a counsel before I go with this real quick. No, I, 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 he, 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 something's wrong. He don't like, people. I mean, I, I do think he likes people, but the way he expresses himself, the dude don't like black people. He likes, he wants to play this, you know, Professor Xavier, <laughs> this, I'm, I'm, I'm brother, I'm brother Asar, and I wrote this, and this is for this reason, and you are a complete fool. I am before, I am before, no, that's not correct, you know, he who cherry ass shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he don't like black people. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Because if you can relate to us, you know how we get down. You know how we function. You know why we function the way we, the way we function. Why try to do shit to belittle us? You know society has always tried to say we were stupid and we were this and then we, and we were that. You're going to push that agenda on your own people and go publicly with it to say face yourself so you can look good as a fucking author? That's some sick shit. That's sick. So, yeah, I agree with you on that, yo. But so uh, hey, 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 yo, yo, to somebody yes, that's mm -hmm. degreed in sociology and psychology, he could have picked your damn brain apart. That's what he could have done. Oh yeah, he, he could have just picked your shit all the way apart. But out of respect for your platform, he just he just answered your questions in the format that you want. Mm. One time did Joshua disrupt, even though you wouldn't mute your mic when Joshua tried to talk. Mm -hmm. Joshua to me, his mind. It's interesting how that stuff goes down. Once again, this shaming of black people that embrace education from a universal understanding. Mm -hmm. It's just consistent. And so you're going about it in the wrong way, brother Asar. Nobody is attacking you personally. Uh, and, 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 and I, I want to say something real quick. Um, I expected it. I expected that type of behavior. Um, what, what, what I what, what I look at is a pattern of behavior um, mm. when dealing with human beings. And mm. Mm. once you see that, you you understand. You, oh, you should not be surprised when they behave a certain way. Whenever someone critiques <laughs> him or disagrees with him, it's the same thing. If you go on for everybody listening, if you go on. Uh, a website called Egypt Search. That's uh, e g y p t search dot com, and just look up a sorry tip. Mm -hmm. and look how look look how he interacts with people that disagree with him, and they ask very valid questions, and you can see the, the same type of responses that uh 
that, that I receive, um, whether it, whether it be um, oh, you, you you're slow, you can't comprehend, just very condescending demeanor coming from him. So I mean, I wasn't surprised. I expected that. I mean, that's why I didn't respond to it like that because it, it, it could have mm-hmm. turned into it could have turned into all right. You you belittle belittle me. I can belittle you, but I didn't want to do that. Because I just want to focus on focus on the information, and I, I knew that he just he can't take criticism. When he started, so, so, so let me ask you another question, Josh. All right. So, all right, how ahead, did bro. the conversation go from dealing with the um, subject at hand, dealing with Masoud Biddy, to uh-huh. your aptitude? How do you think that shifted from that to your aptitude? Because being a peripheral investigator and a primary researcher just requires intelligence Uh and following a method. You had to follow a method because I kept hearing your method was flawed and I'm going, huh? That's improper framing. Sounds like a little bit of NLP. Hmm. The framing was off. So explain, could you just ambiguate that, man? Yeah, um, when, like, see, the thing is, is, I went up. I went out and I, I researched the the consensus, and he was trying to flip that as if I made this up. This is my personal beliefs. These are not my personal beliefs. If you said it's almost like the flat earther, the flat earth uh, versus round earth argument. Flat earth say, "Hey, the earth is flat," and us knowing science and the consensus, all the technology we know, you know, what I'm saying the earth is is a uh, is spherical, and when when you say you know, hey, the Earth is spherical, the flat Earther then flips it on you and say, hey, well, prove the Earth isn't flat. Then, like I, I was the one that made the claim that the Earth was flat in the first place. Um, and then, uh, now what was the original question you asked? I, well, well, how did it? How did the? How do you, in your opinion? Because it could only uh, be your opinion. How mm-hmm. did you? Do you feel? the interaction went from the discussion of in which the ground rules were laid by Brother Hassan on the uh, suit bitty to uh, your aptitude and your, your background uh, as a, why aren't you a linguist? As if you, you need to be a linguist to comprehend his work. Yeah, because he, he doesn't comprehend his work. And his work only, only works within his, in his, in his, in his brain. I mean, w- what we're what we're looking at in his books is his imagination, because because outside of outside of his book, you really can't find anything substantiated, and when you don't understand where he's coming from, because it's something new, there's nothing to back it up besides the words on those pages inside his book. He gets a little frustrated, like how come you don't understand it, and and he starts lashing out, and then he comes, mm-hmm. oh, you just you just a little slow, and you you don't know this because you're not a linguist. Yeah, but 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 again, um, he himself is not a linguist. I don't. It's almost like a Hebrew Israelite with the Bible. You know, so I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the Hebrew Israelites, but it's like when they say, you know, the Exodus happened, and it's true. I said, well, how is it true? Because it's in the book. What book? It's in the Bible. Well, how is the Bible true? Because the Bible says so. It's it's like very circular reasoning involved with with Asari Motel. I mean, it's not, it's, it, and, it, and again, that's understandable because he used to be a Hebrew Israelite, you know. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that, so you, so basically, this is a psychological assessment here. Yeah, we're dealing with some, some, some type of psychosis here. Yeah, because uh-huh. when, when, when you were saying appeal to authority, for some reason, the psychosis of inferiority clicked in, and he had to build a defensive wall around himself to maintain himself as an authoritarian. That's appeal to authority. When you are deeming to be an authority on a subject is an appeal to authority. So you well, say that Joshua is unfounded because Joshua is not a linguist and doesn't understand methodology, yet he holds degrees of methodology in sociology, sociology, which is interactions of humans, and mm-hmm. psychology, which is intelligence. He owns and holds degrees in the very thing you say he's inefficient in. Yeah. How the hell? And you yep. were given a favor 
that he didn't belittle you and tell you, no, I'm degreed in this, bro. I know how to talk. I'm just choosing to talk to you this way. I know how to discern. I have a method, Sean, M Hotel. We have a method, Sean, M Hotel. <laughs> we got yeah, a method. Yeah, yeah, and you're I'm saying the method is so, let me let me say this real quickly. I heard Boy, this this bro. morning. Sean <laughs> said, I didn't watch the video. I didn't even mm. watch. Yes, he did say that. Video. But what I saw on Osar's video, I just automatically knew from the top he lacked methodology. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? Yeah. You might as well be a Packer fan in the Super Bowl, bro. What are you talking Exactly. About? Exactly. <laughs> How could you not? Read? But Asad just told Joshua, you didn't read the book. So now you didn't even watch the video. So apparently a star is talking about YouTube, Sean. Uh -huh. This is the kind of stuff that because somebody got the same basketball you got, you can't take your ball in, in the game. <laughs> See, that's the problem. And I, I, I'm going to continue to give credit to Brother Joshua. This man is a single father and got a degree. How old are you, bro? I'm 32. What? How old are you? Uh, 32. Two years. I thought old black men didn't do that. I thought black men couldn't do that. No, they don't, according to society, you know. And, and where you live? I don't want to, I ain't going to put, we ain't going to put your address. I'm just asking. I'm just. I, 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 I could. You know, they, they can pull up if they want to. No, so, that ain't going to happen. I, I, <laughs> we know that. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. But, no, nah, I say I live in um, Augusta, Georgia. You know? Augusta, wait a minute. Augusta, Georgia. So yeah. now, these stereotypes that are, that are pushed out, and you got the nerve to call a young man from Augusta, Georgia. Wait, 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 wait. So somebody got a lot of a noise in the back. No, I don't hear uh, That's part of me, because I'm on the train, on the airport train. Oh, peace, beloved. OK. Can you, yeah, if you can, mute. I'll chop it out. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sis. But these, these are things that are overlooked. The brother deserves credit. You don't deserve to be told that he's less than. You, you don't deserve that. No. And, that and wasn't one, what one this thing. discussion was supposed to be about in the first place. Go ahead, hey, one, one, thing, one, one thing I wanted to say, you know, just, just looking at his interactions and how he responds to, to the questions. But very, very um, valid questions, valid reasoning, you know, based in logic. Um, he, he has delusions of grandeur, like, he really, like, okay, so delusions of grandeur, you know, for people listening, is the false belief, one's own superiority, greatness, or intelligence. People are experiencing delusions of grandeur, not just have a high self-esteem, instead they believe in their own greatness and importance even in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. So th that was, <laughs> that, that's what I, I, I can see. Like he, he hasn't, he hasn't went through the training to be a linguist. He has trained linguists telling him that he's wrong and he's still right. He has overwhelming evidence in, 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 in science and academia that says that your model is incorrect. Still, he still holds on to it. Um, every bit of, of, of critique that comes his way always oh, incorrect. Oh, I, I'm still right. I mean, to me, it, he, he just caught up in, in, his, <laughs> in his own mind that he's correct no matter what. And I mean, I, I've yet to hear him say that, you know what, I, I was wrong on this. It, it's, it's mostly, I'm correct, everybody else is wrong. I mean, everybody's wrong? How can everybody be wrong? Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I, I want to um, I want to give Brother Joshua props, man, because and then this is also a testament to his uh, accreditation and his understanding of methodology and in his specific field, which is psychology, that he didn't go off on the deep end, even in the face of 
Brother Asar not answering his questions that were valid when asking for evidence of things that he was saying right then and there when he tried to uh, frame it as, oh, we got to do that in a different conversation. That's a, that's a different convo, which is totally BS. You know, any trained person will call that out. But he didn't beat up on, on Brother Asar about that because he knows how Brother Asar is. It's been enough years to see this guy's behavior, to see what is going on with him. So he knew not to even go into that back and forth because now he looks like a fool for arguing with a fool. So I just want to give Brother Joshua his props on that because it's very hard in this community to find people that do have the fortitude and the discipline to not go back and forth like that and, and beat up on people and have a tantrum yeah, just like yeah. Brother Asar was basically on the edge of doing. He actually prevented Asar from going into a deep tantrum because he was about to, on yeah. several occasions, go into a deep tantrum. So this is just a testament to Brother Joshua's skills, <laughs> his social the first, skills. Because Trish, the first, the, the first thing they say, the first thing they say, oh, he got bad character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, but but all he did was insult the brother. So he exactly. Really bad character. Exactly. He's we know where the bad character is. Right. He's a I, hypocrite. You know. So. Right. I like I like to say this. I think the entire set sit down setting was really just to, to, to try to make a mockery of, jo- of Joshua, uh, his intelligence. Uh, really, if you wanted to respond to someone's critique, you could have just responded via social media. You could have responded with another video since he was documented via video. Uh, he could have done that like mm. he's done in the past that I've seen him do. Uh, but instead, he rather have Joshua on, but during the entire time, like 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 we stated earlier, he played an appeal to authority to himself. Be that it's his platform or his channel, he can do what he wants. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's it's about but, but academic see, was, integrity here. And, and but that he was clearly why, showed he doesn't have it. Yes, yes, exactly. And that was why he wanted to show on this platform in the first place, which is an obvious bias issue, because on his platform he can control the narrative. That's mm-hmm. why when I suggested but, to the brother that we do it on a neutral platform, he claimed that his platform was neutral. Now, how did he did this today? <laughs> yeah, he did. He right, did say we, that. We expected that, though. It's not like it was something new to us. Like, we expected that. We know his behavior. That, right. And that's why, see, we're not scared. We're not scared of having a away game. All right? We, right. We, handle biz- we handle business no matter what. And that's why the brother Josh went on the show anyway. Because exactly. Because there was a game. We won- wanted to see what your game was because we're going to beat you at your own game. You better know that. And and this is something that I heard that it wasn't a debate. So this is what we we, we, we have a solution for. Um, Much honor and respect to Anka Keck and Ishmael and those brothers who started um, Amira Squad. Because without that, it wouldn't have led to the maturation and growth to Team Osiris. Nobody is not admitting to that. I don't even know when that started. I think that came out of inferiority complexes, but that never was ever, nobody's ever not given respect to Amira Squad in that aspect. Uh, Anka Keck has opened the way for a lot of stuff. You have to give Anka Keck credit for that. Um, He deserves it. Uh, But this is the thing. We are the black flag and what we do We deal with spurious content. We deal with spurious content that takes advantage of those that are asking for help in the field of scholastic achievement. So now, in in knowing that, in the spirit of that, I heard the term debate. Of course we were going to debate. We've been waiting to debate you guys for five years. This is not anything new. You guys have have tried to blackball Team Osiris, not mention our names like Sean did this morning. Oh, the person is in the chat, but I won't say his name. That weak shit. <laughs> I asked to come on the chat and you wouldn't let me. I have no problem going to an away game, homie. I'm Kansu. I have no problem <laughs> wearing your ass yeah. out on your, on your field. None at all. But you did. You showed your character. If character was bad, you showed it this morning too. And that's on you, Garfield. 
since, since y'all don't name names, we gonna name them. Cause I ain't got no, I'm not no fear why I can't name your name. There's no disrespect here. It is all about growth. You know, steel sharp and steel. So let's have a team Osiris versus Amin Raswa. We'll even make you the home team. Team Osiris versus Amin Raswa. You get your best, we'll get our best. As long as the topic ain't stupid. We don't do the, the, the ghetto topics. We don't do that. It'll, it, that. It, it'll be framed properly. and it, it, The premise will be fit the intelligence. Yep. Not going to be some silly shit. Ain't going to be no freestyle Friday. Because you really don't know who and what we are, and that's what intimidates you. Yeah. Outside of Anka Kett, I give Anka Kett, once again, he knows things that about Timo Cyrus, he was right there when it started. And he know, if there's one thing he know, Timo Cyrus ain't no damn fools. We ain't nothing to fuck with on the intelligence side. That's the last thing you want to do. So I think the, the public will love that. Those who are watching this video, those that support the Jawu and um, Asar and Amin, and Amin Ra squad, I know y'all want to see that. I know y'all want to see Team Osiris versus Amin Ra squad. I know y'all want to see that. Everybody knows that. Everybody been waiting on it. So we're not going to take this discussion and it's taken off as a victory against the juggernauts. We the patriots of this shit. We win without trying to win. And we've always done that. And we've been open to fair game since the beginning. Asar, bro, you got to tighten your game up. You was wrong. You didn't have no, you didn't even know who you was talking to, apparently. So we wanted to kind of clear that up. We're going to continue to converse about it, but we wanted to clear that up. I want to, I'm, I'm going to repeat this again. Major, minor, psychology, sociology. Computer guy. You're talking about social, psychological issues in the realm of neurolinguistics with historical background. Hmm. I wonder if psychology and sociology have a more relative term than a computer guy. Say that. I'm a, I wonder. I'm just using my intelligence and deduction here and my inductive reasoning so that I can abduct the truth. There's a process in which the, the medulla works with the amygdala. It's called inductive, deductive, and abductive. In order for the amygdala to work, it can't be overstimulated or it will go directly to the brain stem and pass the abdullah. Now, oh man, I guess I wasn't supposed to know that, huh? Guess I'm slow. We stupid. We can't read. We stupid as hell. We don't know nothing about amygdala hijacking. Nothing about that. Nothing about NLP. We don't know nothing about framing and the using mm -hmm. of words to frame and isolate an argument. A Tarulian argument. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about that, I guess. So mm -hmm. this is what knowledge can destroy foolishness every single time. And this is what the problem is. Knowledge is not bias. Knowledge is. So when knowledge meets knowledge, it's supposed to be greatness that comes out of that. So this could potentially be something great for someone if we brought our knowledge together. And that's what was, it was we would hope for that, but we knew it wasn't going to go that route. We knew which route it was going to go. Mm -hmm. It was going to go pay for my book, buy my book, and come to my lecture for ninety nine ninety five. <laughs> Yeah, are, let me let me cite myself as the authority. It's in my book. Let me. I I, I, I talked about it. <laughs> and you you said you weren't gonna flash your book, and you flashed the damn book. Just had and, to do it. We was and you went over the time limit. Then you said, "Oh, this is a bonus." But you told us going in, it was only gonna be a half hour dissertation into the video. Then you came with the bonus. And you skipped over minutes uh, to get to the points that you wanted to get to on that bonus. Well, guys, give us, give him some credit because at least he did stick to insulting the brother like he did say he would do. <laughs> hey, that's the only thing. That's the only thing he did uh, consistently. <laughs> he was exceptional at that. 
Bravo, brother. Bravo. You insulted your fellow brother. Bravo. Uh, Malik, I know Malik's been pretty quiet. Malik, did you have... Uh... And so has uh, Tiffany. I know Tiffany's going to probably say Yeah, that. I'm here. I'm Can't sorry. You hear me? We've been running our mouth. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was the noise in the background, so I had to put myself on mute. Well, uh, yeah, I'm basically hearing everything you're saying. But you know what? I already knew that was coming. I just knew that. I, I already knew that he wanted Joshua to get on there, so his intent is to show off his so-called intelligence and to insult the man's intelligence. That's all it was to it. It wasn't about, oh, let me correct the information so his brother can get some better understanding of where I was coming from or et cetera. It was more so about letting me go ahead and insult this dude and make him look stupid or make him feel stupid about himself because I know more than what he knows. I am a linguist and I got degrees and yada, yada, yada. That's that condescending attitude. That's it. They all like that. Most of them like that in that, uh, that organization. Most of them. Mm. Unc is cool. No. I like Unc. He's entertaining. No, 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 the, re no, no, the rest no. of them. Yeah, yeah, Unc. No. Yeah, Unc is cool. Yeah, Let's cool. see. Nahinsi. Yeah, Nahinsi cool. Um, Dr. Ma, she cool. But Benjamin, his wife, John, <laughs> a star. <laughs> Joe. Yeah, them. Them. Sh they, sh they, sh they. Sh they sh some, okay. Asshole nation. I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Real them, talk. them, them guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they just yeah, those individuals. I, 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 I too much. You know, they too, they too condescending for me. And uh, son Jetty cool. He all right. He can be all right, but he can be a little condescending too. But he all right. Okay. <laughs> Malik, are you done? Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. That's, that's real as rain. So what up, bro? You 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 be the quiet. Uh, always quiet, man. Mm. Can somebody on uh, meet their background? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Um. I'm 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 gonna try to be uh. As polite as possible. Okay, I'll do the one. Okay. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because <laughs> let me just say that first of all, you know, um, the team was the team was painted. Can somebody somebody mute their background? The team was um let me let me start with just saying this. I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. I didn't join Team Osiris to be for the Amara squad. That was never a part of any reason why I joined Team Osiris. And I see Hey, is somebody on the phone? They, they may not realize it. I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll mute them. Forgive okay. me, whoever this is. I, I, I'm not muting you just to. I just muted you for. So I didn't. I didn't join for those reasons, and I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say no names, right? Because, um, it's about good character, right? It's about yes. good character. Uh, Iwe Pele. Uh, we talk about. We talk about my yacht character and all these type of things <clears throat> and when I joined brother that's in the traditions unfriended me because I joined Team Osiris when the tra these traditions come first not an online group not an online group but the traditions that were initiated to that's first and foremost Another brother unfriends me. No reason why. Never did nothing to the brother. Few few people act funny style towards me. 
haven't said nothing. And what I hear is Timo Cyrus has bad character. But every time I turn around and we're mentioned on by somebody or somebody's mentioned, it's always something very negative. Um, and yesterday, for someone that supposedly is in the traditions, and I saw somebody in the chat room greet Asar as a babalao, a boa boy Oh, what? Where the, where, where, what? what? Somebody in what? the chat room. Someone, I'm, I'm just, maybe the person assumed. Maybe the person assumed. Maybe the person doesn't realize that that greeting is only for a babalao. But greeted him, a oh boy, a oh boy, was she shake. But greeted him. That is a babalao. That's how you greet the babalao. But regardless if he's a Baba Lao or not, for me, what I what what really irritates me the most out of this is the Iwe Pele. And so someone or people will look at that and say, see, that's how they act. So your you, your your character as an initiate is reflecting the rest of us. But he don't really know who is highly initiated on Team Osiris to do that. <laughs> he ain't got a clue. <laughs> so I, I find I just find I find that offense I find that offensive. Uh, yeah. I find that offensive. Um and just you know I don't know if the brother is an atheist or not because I know a lot of I'm a Rasquaz atheist. Um, I, I would hope he, I, I would hope he's not an atheist because that would be contradictory to me initiate in Ifa. But I, I pray for the brother. That's right, I pray because I'm a spooky person. And I'm I'm a proud spooky person. I have no I have no problem admitting I'm spooky. I have no problem with it at all. Um so you know that's really that's really about it, man. Like, like, like for me, this isn't this isn't my avenue of conversation, okay? But I some things some some red flags did get raised in my head. For example, Bantu covers Central and the South Africa, uh -huh. and Congo, for example, is about. 25 to 3,000 miles away from what is present day Iraq. And Sumeria was southern part of Iraq. Now, what I find interesting, and this, I say this not to say that I'm agreeing with Dr. Wesley Muhammad, but why is Dr. Wesley Muhammad wrong for saying that the Arabs were black people or saying that Islam has its origin in, in Kemet? Or other people saying Christianity has its origins in Kemet, but the Bantu and the Sumerian language are connected somehow. Woo! I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't. This ain't my avenue. My avenue mm -hmm. is is political science, and there is a lot of capitalistic behavior that I do see with the Amaraswa. There is a lot of Eurocentric thinking that I see with some people from the Amaraswa. I have heard someone from the Amaraswa, I ain't gonna say their name, but that black African power only means for so-called African Americans here in North America. You have some people that's down with ADOS. I just find it to be a little contradictory to have a name of thing that comes from Africa, or some people are atheists but have names of deities. Because I know back in the day, <laughs> you couldn't you couldn't take on certain attributes, certain names without there being a universal beatdown. You couldn't take on mm -hmm. certain attributes and names without being verbally regulated. Mm -hmm. Sean proved yeah, Sean proved that name. Where'd you get that mm -hmm. name from? Why are you taking that name? You don't deal with that science, so why are you taking that name? But that's that's nitpicking. That's nitpicking. 
that's neither here nor there. That's all I got to say. Well, this is, this is something that needs to be understood. Scientists observe nature and make it a science in doing it. That's why they're called scientists because they observe nature and add a method to discovering it, which makes it a science. It is not confined to the universal knowledge system that was amalgamated popularly by Herodotus. That is a different culture construct and a different ontology. We represent African ontology that carries a science that is beyond and correlates with academia. It is beyond because it is ancient and it correlates the evolution of science through technology. And with technology brought engineering and the mathematics that explain it. Because science needs math in order to explain its point. I guess, I don't know, how do we know this? We're dumb. I don't know how we know it. <laughs> By God. There, there you go, being incorrect, using multiple disciplines together to synthesize a, a conclusion about something. Tisk tisk. <laughs> <laughs> like, who can't read? It's 2020. It's not 1963. <laughs> it's 2020. You don't even have to read. You can click and the computer will talk for you. Facts. Them days are done. There's no more slave with the crack whip. See, we crack back. That can't go on. And so with no slave master, no Sambo, no Sambo, no overseer. Mm. Mm. Ain't mm. none of that shit no more. Because I know what you know. Facts. You're not my goddamn overseer. I know that. That God shit don't sure. work. Hey, 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 I saw, I saw, I think he speak, he speak Latin or something. He the only one that can read the Bible and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the writing is on the wall, man. I mean, hey, you, hey let me let me bring up a point. Uh, remember when genealogy and genetics and stuff first kind of came out and started really, really being used in academia? Three oh four, and, and and it was a, a shock to the system of a lot of the linguistic scholars, a lot of the cultural scholars who were unaware. Of course, you know, not their fault because the technology wasn't there yet. But they were very upset. A lot of the biblical scholars, a lot of these uh, linguists, they had a, a shot, right? But this was back in like 78. This was back in like 88 uh, to 95 or whatever when these things, these uh, genealogy stuff was really, uh, was really like when we mastered the genome and all of that kind of shit. Th this is a delayed shock. This is the same thing that these linguists went through and they were shocked. By the, by the advent of genetics, that it is happening right now in 2020 from these particular, this sect of our community, conscious community, right? Who we can admit has been behind on some things, right? We, we can openly admit that, right? Because we are honest people. So what we're, what we're witnessing is a shock to a SARS system, a shock to all of these brothers' systems, the, uh, these embolies, the, you know, Geopin and guys like that who did not have those tools, right? But there's no, there's no excuse for being in shock about that right now in 2020, right? And holding on to these old methodologies that have since been uh, sent into obscurity, so to speak, in favor of using multiple disciplines to, to check and balance what the fuck it is you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so, yes. So, so the writing is on the wall. All of this stuff has been recorded. Any, any person who is trained or has some sense and has uh, any, any, any um, accreditation in any field of study will be able to see through all of the smoke and mirrors, the games that are being played, even to the, to the point of the fans 
of these different movements uh, openly admitting in the conversation that, hey, I don't really understand what's going on, what's being argued, but I'm, I'm, I'm going for my brother Asar. He's right because he sounds more technical. This, this is verbatim now. I'm not making this up. This is stuff that several people are saying. So that, that lets you know the state of our community and the willingness of people that are acting in a charlatan way or a scammer way to take advantage of these people who do not know what is going on or why they agree with A, B, or C. Oh, Triz, hey, Triz. Yes, sir. Coming up in the next week or two, we got something for them. We got something that's going to show us some of the tricks oh, yeah. they're trying to pull on our people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know it's coming. It's coming. And th this is why we sit back and we're comfortable with letting people have these fits and so-called win a conversation and, 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 and flip the narrative of conversations and all this. We just sit back and we let you have your fit, just like a little kid, you know, having a fit on the, on the floor, right? kicking and scratching because we understand that that doesn't move accredited people that does not move people emotionally that only moves people who do not really understand uh, Mel, uh, brother melvin yes sir is it okay to say hello to the one person in the chat that happens to know french well, yeah, it's okay. You can definitely. Oh, let okay. Know. Well, I've been wanting to say something because I heard it again that we didn't decipher the book. Uh oh, uh, that's just one person. That's just one person. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, Kansu, you about to invite Google Translate on? Oh yeah, that, that, no. I've heard we use Google Translate <laughs> with Jean Claude. Jean Claude, the world is steam linguist. Jean Claude. Emboli. Yeah, we, got two, we got two Google Translates. Uh, one of them is his name. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Google Translate. What's up? What's up? Hi. What up? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm still. Um, listen, I, I I come from a bilingual country. Uh, we we start learning French from the third grade. Um, you only have to take it to the ninth grade. Um, I was an exchange student. Was uh, uh, to the um, Wow. Say well, that again. You was an exchange student. Where? So what do you want me to say? <laughs> well, no, it's not what I want you to say. What what okay. it is is respect the fact that. We, we honor education and, and knowledge. You are trained and grew up knowing French language. Well, well Kasu, real quick, let, let me ask a little question. Um, um, tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. You think you can you respond in French? Is that, that's all right with you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, Cool. Can you uh give me <clears throat> uh let me see what I want you to say. Well, I'm, I'm going to say a, a phrase, and I want you to say it back in French. Okay, see if you can do it. I don't know, but um uh today I went to the market and I bought some chicken. How do you say that in French? Uh, Aujourd'hui, uh, je viens au supermarché et uh, 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 j'ai poché uh, poulet. Sorry, it's been a long time since I spoke. I'm better at reading, having uh, conversations is hard most mm -hmm. of the time. Speaking, I'm speaking, speaking of reading, do you still have that yellow book I sent you? <laughs> you had to read that shit too? No, she, she ain't gonna read it on, on air, but the fact that she has it is a reason that she has it. 
No, no, that's what I'm saying. She she had to read that shit too. I thought she was just oh, yeah, reading yeah. something. She, I, had, I she had to. She had to. Uh, damn. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um, the book was interesting. I could yeah. say. Um, I did. I, like I said, like I, I I was reading his French. It is a little bit different than uh, the French, like, like Canadian French, because mm. people perhaps say that our French isn't as well as. Mm. Uh, France French, which is what um, some African speaking uh, speaking. Um, I do have a friend who's actually native speaking French. So when I had trouble reading the book, I would, she's actually my neighbor. I would go to her and say, "Can you help me with this? Because I'm having a hard time translating." And even she, who's native speaking French, I had a hard time deciphering. There's a lot of errors, spelling errors. Um, Mm. That just didn't make sense in that book alone. So it, it wasn't just Google Translate. Like when you have native speaking French and people that have taken French for pretty much their whole lives, it's very hard. Uh, it was very hard uh, to decipher some of the things he was trying to portray in his book. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, what would you say of uh, the type of French that you read in the book? Uh, would it, would it, it obviously is in native. Would it be some form of like broken uh, French, so to speak, or would it be some sort of uh, no, dialect? I didn't think it was broken, broken French. I think it was dialect. Okay. Being that he's uh, being that he's African. Right. Um, their dialect's going to be, and it's going to be a lot different than Canadian French. Mm -hmm. They say our French is very um, watered down because of the English in influence here. Um, but when I went to school, I was actually taught proper French. Um, yeah. When I was an exchange student, I was, I was here in Quebec. I didn't go to uh, France to be an exchange student. So, um, uh, the experience was like I, I got I um, there was a lot of English influence, especially being around the Montreal area. But at the same time, they didn't give me any slack because they didn't like English speaking people. Mm. Interesting. Uh, See, Kasi, did you have any yeah. other questions for? Her? No, no, I didn't. I appreciate. I appreciate. Um, and Sean, by the way, he's actually the one that suggested that I help you guys since, you know, they didn't have anyone speak French. So shout out to Sean. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Sean. Uh, yeah, shout out to thank you, Sean, because I do appreciate you know I didn't you know I knew I, I didn't want to put you on the spot. And again, another naturally humble person, just a natural humble person. She she does not have an intent to be malicious. It's just being a regular human being. Having a respect for humans is undoubtedly African when you study ontology. You know ontology and how epistemologies are developed. It's a, it's a subject called, it's a, it's a study called humanities. And then when you take humanities, normally you have a background in social studies. And you carry these social sciences on to higher degrees so you know how to interact and assimilate under pressure situations so that your ass is not psychotic or you, you have a social issues. But when you talk down to people, it's clear you can't handle diversity. It's clear that you can't handle diversity, but you talk about diversity. You talk about the Bantus and the so-and-sos and the wall offs and the, I couldn't see, you couldn't handle somebody of foreign distinction, distinguished because you would probably be racist toward them because you have these social hangups. Anytime you can assume that another human being is dumb and operates at a less capacity than you, that makes you a supremacist. And then it makes you racist because you categorize that based on who you think that person is and not asking them. So you make a abductive, reasoning claims without being induced properly. 
So your deducement is off. So that process of thinking in between actually applying is, is just marred a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because we're having a human experience here. And if we're going to jump in and out of scholastic requirements, come on, guys, let's just keep it above. Because we, we don't really have a value for the academic system. We really don't. We don't need no university to validate who the hell we are. We standing on who we are. We standing on this planet. That's what we are part of. So we are already validated as valuable. However, if you want to discuss scholarship, then be true to the term. Are you a student? And from where and who? If you're going to study scholarship. So if somebody comes with investigative, journalism as a peripheral agent of that knowledge how can you be offended and call somebody inept and to make it matters worse the supportive claims were of a primary nature joshua never claimed to be a linguist none of us however somebody whose name rhymes with afar called Asar, claims to be a linguist. Not a practitioner, not an enthusiast, but a damn pro. You claim to be the pro of all pros. And everybody else is remedial and got learning disabilities and things of this nature. So therefore, we had to disambiguate that up because that's not going to going to fly. You could have kept, you could have just kept this scholastic and not have you and your underlings talk about someone's intelligence and lack of methodology. That's, you might have just said Joshua's stupid. That's what you wanted to say. And so it, it, it's unwarranted. Time and time again, we've explained, if you just go to our YouTube channel, we've done, channel, we, we've done um, streams on linguistics. We've broken down grammar, phonetics, morphology, syntax, semantics. We understand that the key terms in studying and understanding linguistics is um, using lexicons and understanding grammar. This is why the comparative method needs sometimes proto-language in order to substantiate that. Now, I didn't go to school for linguistics. I just researched it because I have the intelligence and the aptitude to do that. It does not require that I write a book. I don't have to write a book. <laughs> don't have to do that. Don't care to do that. Not in my wheelhouse. But it doesn't mean I can't read your shit. Go ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say primary, the primary language that do go through the academic field to get degrees are doing that for employment reasons. A lot of times they're going to be working for government and they need to have that background in case they have to travel to another country. Uh, or if they're translators, they're hired translators. They got to be able to proof readers. Correct. Right. Proof readers. Also, if you're going to be a teacher, uh, you're going to need to be able to understand the rules of linguistics uh, to teach it. So it's, it's for employment reasons, the majority of the time, there's many other positions, but I'm just saying there's employment reasons for why you would want to have a degree in linguistics, but you don't necessarily need one to understand it. But there are rules in each and every field of science and study, and you have to follow those rules. When you don't follow those rules and you claim to be uh, a person who finds something completely contrary to the current standard, it's on you to prove why your new research is considered the standard. And I think people fail to at least appreciate that there are rules within the study and you just can't go out and make up protos of a language that does not exist. You just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't match Sumerian and Bantu when they're not even in the same timeline. They're not even alive at the same time. 
<laughs> how, how do you come up with that conclusion? Like, uh, <laughs> so, you know, that that's what makes you friends. That's what makes you a friend, Skyler. That's what makes you a pseudo linguist. It's because you're making those exceptional claims that have no backing. I mean, I keep hearing, Mel, that he demonstrates his method. I didn't see any demonstration of pragmatics, no demonstration of semantics or syntax or morphology, phonology or phonetics. I did not see it's, it's, it's phonology. Any, any, any method of that. Well, I'll, I'll say I'll say Emboli showcased his his uh basis on phonology. I won't say it's his knowledge. But yeah, Emboli did it, but Emboli Asa did didn't. Correct. Asa just uh, just went with what was already established. Correct. See what like what Asa is trying to do. You're claiming PhD, bro. You're claiming that your work is unique and brand new. You synthesized. I, mean, I wouldn't even say PhD, bro. The way he came at. Uh, Dr. Oberdeli Combone. Well, the, we, we know that was like, you know, we know that was foolish. That was yeah, he was grad level. Yeah, I mean, no, he tries to and and, and the way he talked about textbooks, like, like I feel I feel completely, you know, misled after spending so much money on a damn textbook. Are you telling me the textbooks is not legit? Okay, <laughs> I, I don't. I just named two <laughs> of the linguists. I feel, I feel <laughs> hoodwinked, yo. I need my money back. I just named only two of the linguists there. Chris Herod and Combo. I just named, and I went on both sides of the spectrum on purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, just both sides. Yeah. Them two guys alone. And then when a Bachelor of the Arts tells me that this person has an inferiority complex, Mm. Joshua did. What the hell I look like listening to, to the computer repair man? What the hell? Why would I do that? Why would why would common sense empower me for this person but, to tell me this? But he published. But he who <laughs> Zachariah <laughs> Zachariah Stitcher is published too, but we're not gonna yeah. New York is published. Yeah, yep. Graham Hancock, all the whole the whole gamut of pseudo uh scholars. Yeah, yeah, y'all could do it right now. Y'all really could. <laughs> what does publishing mean? Let's let us let us get this correct. See, we can run the gamut. <laughs> We've already taught somebody how to correct their book. Remember that. We taught you how to stop copying people's shit. Remember? Do y'all remember that? Uh Asar and, and Wajabu. Wajabu, yeah. Remember Wajabu when we helped you fix your book up? Now, yeah. now, now call it Sessio Mahal and Come on now. <laughs> huh? We, we see the name change in the publications. I see y'all okay. doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, so we've already done that. And, and for some reason, we're the culprits here. We didn't write the damn book. We didn't take all of somebody else's book and, and rewrite it. We didn't do that. Because we weren't empowered to write no book about meta and shit. That wasn't a goal or an aspiring goal. Mm -hmm. Those books are that. already written. There's no need. It is shit's written. It's a precedent set. Nobody's no filling out applications of doing shit with meta meta. It's just, it's just something for history. It's something for our culture. I love meta meta. It's just something for our culture. But it ain't nothing where I got the oh shit. Let me hurry up and get this in my under my bed. No. No. That's personal, and that's cool, you know, that's all good. So now y'all the foremost authority on writing books. When did this happen? <laughs> Where's your literary degrees to show that you are the foremost authority on writing books? Where are your English and grammar degrees? Who's the publication to show company? That you can assess a book. What's the publication company name? Right. What's your why you don't what you, you got you got an ISBN? Last time we checked. Now don't don't last time we did it, shit was missing that it came back two weeks later. We checked Library of Congress, we did all of that. Every time we answer those problems, we get hated for it. You, you 
And there's a difference between being published and non-published. The publishing game in literature works the same way as the music business used to. Mm -hmm. Okay? I publish you. I take your royalties. I give you a percentage. You copyright your royalties under a publishing house, which copyrights the work to the owner of the house that pays the distributor a fee to be the a and r of their work so when you non-publish you're independent so you're non-published there's certain rules and regulations you don't have to follow like an isbn and a barcode so one can plagiarize and do what they want on their whim. So the majority of the authors that they are replicating are non-published for a good damn reason. Because if it has to meet strict trial of scholarly scrutiny, they would fail miserably because they're gonna be subject to evolution. It's called technology. In the science world, when we what's separate from evolution is called technology. And what creates technology? Engineering. And how do we prove the engineering? Mathematics. That's the science behind knowledge, gnosis. That's that science. That's the universal knowledge system. We create probabilities through scientific method by using the Bayesian theory, which gives us the ability to create a scientific theory, not a layman's theory. All of these things are explainable if you just took your time and read at a sixth grade education. It's all, it's all you got to do. And if you understand cognitive thinking, you wouldn't have cognitive dissonance because you will be able to correlate all these things together to get in abductive reasoning around your thought patterns. So it's clear that you have a psychosis and you are in denial and you have an inferiority complex. It's just clear that that's what's going on here. Maybe something happened in your childhood or something, I don't know. But you can't take body shots at reputable people and then expect them not to retort in like manner because people have respect for themselves and you're not going to shame other great black people at, at, at your expense it's just not going to work that way that's not what we're made of i'm not going to um dis disregard or disrespect asar emotep to make Kansu look good because I'm never saying that Asayam Otep wasn't very intelligent. You got to be damn sure intelligent to pull that slick shit off you pull off. <laughs> you got to be a genius. So that shit you be doing. So that's okay. Uh, but the debate, let's have the debate, guys. Let's have the debate, Amira Squad. I think that would be healthy for the culture. I think it will be monumental. And I think, you know, we got we team Osiris and y'all team Amara Squad. And I know that at the end of the day, we all gonna be cool and everyone gonna benefit from this from this discourse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna all be better and smarter, wiser. You know what I'm saying? You know. I'm with it. I'm all for it, man. You know, we already have a precedent that we don't run and we want all the smoke, all of it. All that shit. Yes, sir. All that smoke. <laughs> Oh, but we're, we're, we're expecting a retort here and I'll let just a little bit of the cat out the bag. The debate's not going to happen. Guaranteed. They won't even let me on the platform this morning. The debate's not going to happen. And that's my, that's my prediction, guys. I'm not speaking for the whole team. I don't think it's going to happen because we're not going to settle for the dumb dumb shit. We're not gonna, it's not gonna be a dumb dumb debate. Oh no, 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 no. We're gonna have some special things going on in this debate. 
is going to keep it honest. So yeah, I, I wonder if that happened. Happen. I, I think it'll happen. I'm trying to be optimistic here. Right. I want it to happen. I think it's necessary for the culture. I think Ooh, people. Are, I wish it would happen. I hope yeah, right, I think it's, I'll be right now. Yeah, I have to be oh. optimistic, man. You know, you never know. Oh, I can't wait for Garfield. I, hey, I'm surprised. Garfield. Boy, I've been waiting on Mr. Garfield. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that uh, we got this far, you know, to have it sit down. So, you know, <clears throat> I'm optimistic right now. Can't wait to chew the fat with Garfield. Mm. It's been a minute, too. Yachty. Mr. T. Mr. T. Mo Cyrus. Like, we was, we was boys. Like, mm. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I think, I think we have a good time. We ain't gonna nobody disrespect nobody and call each other out their name. That ain't gonna happen. We ain't gonna let it. No. We ain't gonna let it happen. But it's gonna be some cooking in the kitchen. You believe? You, we, you know, we ain't gonna have, uh, you know, uh, I'm not real well versed in the rap battle league. Smurrack ain't gonna be the goddamn moderator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. So don't y'all even think that's gonna happen. Uncle Joe ain't gonna be the moderator. <laughs> 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 of course. That shit ain't going down like that, Papa. No, this that moderator gonna have some some letters behind their name. Mm. ABC. No, no, no URL hosting. OP. <laughs> <laughs> no, no URL rappers. No disrespect to you guys. Shout out. B dot, what's up? It's good, B dot. Yeah, what up, B dot? But no, no, no. No, sir. No, sir. We Bobby. Uh, no. And a personal shout out to Dr. Reggie. Mm -hmm. We're coming to a close. I wanted to reach out to him. Dr. Reggie. Bro, you are beyond, bro, you are smart as fuck. Dr. Reggie is really smart for real. I'm so freaking serious. Bro, I don't know what it is. It's nothing wrong with talking to your boy, Kasu. It is not going to endanger your relationship with Ankh or any of those guys. Ankh is a reasonable thinking guy. Okay, we've had... Uh, disagreements, but everybody grows and learns. Because I appreciate some of your opinions. And it really, it just, I don't understand this gangbang mafia shit. It has nothing. A discourse, bro, these are not about sides, like who's picking a side. Right. Because we work every day, shit. That's the side. We try to get out of that shit. We ain't trying to work until we get old and gray. We trying to get up out of that. So, Dr. Reggie, man, you know, what's up, man? I'll let you know. I've been trying to reach out to you. I like some of the things you are. I like the way you handle in Egypt. I like that. I like the way you handle in Egypt, bro. It's fine for shit. Some good stuff. Um, uh, I, I guess we said we cut everything. I can't really... Uh, gave gave praise to my man Obadali. Uh, shout out to Chris, big Chris Eric. Shout out. Uh, it's another project we're working on. Shout out to Nina Jablonski. Shout out to Nina Jablonski. Some things her, shout working, out to her. We're working on uh, that's going to deal with this Afrocentricity. Mm. And it's and it's and it's pure and raw misunderstanding. I'm dealing with those things. But shout out to Nina Jabowski, that, that that motherfucker right there. Yeah. Hella hella, hella hella scholar. Um, the brother Hero Jones is coming out with uh, some things that. I think going to be groundbreaking because nobody in the conscious community talks about it. And I promise you, we're going to have to find a way. With this one right here, we're going to have to find a way, guys, 
I'm really thinking about like trademarking some shit for real. I, I was just getting ready to say because that because so nobody's talking about this in the conscious community. Nope. Ever. Nobody's ever talked about it. What he rose about to do. And I know what's getting ready to happen once he comes out with it. I already know the phrases, the terms. They getting ready to get polited. Watch what, just watch. Got to get here. Got to get hero at LLC after this one. Something, because I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> hero, we're going to have to talk about that on the real. For real. I'm, I'm not even being facetious. I'm yeah. actually being serious. Like, I want to put a TM. I want TM to come up by your shit. Yep. Like, purposely, <laughs> we'll do the essay first, and then peer review submit, and then trademark it. Trademark yes, the titles and shit like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about hmm. Wheels of turn. Wheels of turn. Because I already know, bro. Nobody's talking about what that was coming out there. Because you're going to hear other people say, well, you know, the such and such, huh? Like, it's funny. We did a three-part video on the comedic fanatic. How many years ago? And now all of a sudden, folks is, is, is talking about comedic fanatics. We talked about that long, long, long time ago. The Black Russians. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's talking about Bantus. Hmm. Aboriginals. Hmm. So our stuff is already logged and recorded. Oh, don't forget the York. Oh, and yeah. I was just yeah, you you took the what I was just getting ready to say. Then we yeah. talk about Joe, and now people talking about Joe at conferences and shit. At the at the the damn pay as you go uh um cell phone conference. You know, <laughs> damn ass cat. Well, you know, it's the Boost Mobile peer group. Just come with a check and we're going to say your shit's hot. You do know people pay to be a part of ASCAC, right? Yes, yes. I'm very clear. They yeah, have, they have an elders division. They got an elders oh, division. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got a they got a mother's division, too. I was looking to be a member, but you got to pay to be a member, you know? Got to pay? Pay. That's, well, well, well. well. Shout out to Linda Jeffries, Ashe. And Mr. Mario Beatty. Shout out to Mario Beatty. Ashe. Is that the same guy? I'm wondering if Mario Beatty is the same guy that debated. Um, yes, same guy. What's the Afro, what's the uh, Black Power guy that died in uh, Africa? Oh, man. What is that? The articulate man, this is my guy, and I can't think his name. Kwame and Kruman. Yeah. Kwame Ture. I'm sorry. Kwame Ture. Didn't Mario Beatty debate Kwame Ture? Let me let me see. Let me check live. I'm almost right. I, I believe I'm right. I don't want to just make up this shit, so I ain't even go. Um but I don't know. You know what? I'm wrong. It's not Mario Beatty. It's Mole Fasanti. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Wrong guy. Because Mole Fasanti has some of Asai Emotep's work in his book. Ooh, wee. Yep. Yeah. And Beatty and Asai had a, a quote unquote debate as well. Okay. That's, that's dope. Yep. That's dope, man. I like that. I like that flavor. <clears throat> yeah, Mola Fasanti has a Encyclopedia of African Religions, Volume 1 and 2. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting book. And uh, I do like the debate with Mola Fasanti and uh, Kwame. That was very enlightening. I was, man, Kwame, I was a Kwame. When I heard that one, I was like, yeah, Kwame's my guy. But, uh, yeah, we, we just had to 
create a video, video this train in the spirit of competition and set things right with the team on Science Paradigm because we're really miss, we're misunderstood and I understand why because we don't really talk about it ourselves like that. We don't really bombard the internet with just endless videos for no reason. Um, and we're just asking intelligent questions. How can certified professionals be minimized? How can a degree person get told he doesn't understand methodology? Um, I just, I, I don't understand that. It's all based around logic, and that is illogical. It's unfounded, and it's well, just know, out by virus. You know, some of these people kind of do pick and choose with how they want to use logic now. Uh, when it favors them, they'll use it, but yes, you know, when trying to prove a point or insinuate some things, they won't use it, but, you know. Yes, it, it, it's very, it's a, it's a, it's a quite a delight to see people who think they master rhetoric. It's pretty interesting. It is. Um, to know that uh, the ineptitude is all based on ignorance, because you don't know us. You don't even converse with us, so you don't know anything about us. Yet you make these assumptions to the public. You slander, like a tabloid magazine or something. You don't know anything about the people of Team Osiris. You don't even really know how many members of Mm. At all. You don't know. If they only really knew. Right. You don't know. You don't have a clue what time it is. So, uh, you know, it's, I would just want to see us kind of engage in fruitful competition because we're all parallel. We all want the same goals. I believe um, Amir Rasqua wants the same goal as Team Osiris, which is a peaceful existence. Injustice. I believe y'all want the same thing. I don't think that y'all are detriment to the community or anything like that. I don't think that that's an issue. But you know, it's it's, it's just that we need uh, clarity, and this is about those that are partaking of things that we have to say, and they take times out of their lives just to listen to what we have to say, and that goes a long way. Now, if if and when you guys are ready to do that, then let's do that. You know, cut the personal crap out. This the personal stuff is silly. It makes absolutely no sense. Cut the name calling, cut the passive aggressive. You're not that smart. Yep. You're just as smart as we are. You're not that smart. Well, you're smarter than we are. We're just as smart as you. So the passive aggressive psychological games that you're playing, don't work. We don't want to interfere with your paid classes and your books. I mean, work. keep <laughs> hustling and sell your damn books. Nobody's trying to stop that. I mean, if they're nice, I can add another book to my collection. The library. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what Jabu gave Dave Prey, I think it was nice. I, I, I was, was so. Yeah, it was Sean. Sean, Sean, no better. Yeah, Sean, no better. But yeah, uh, praise to the library. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can add a Legion volume two. I was about to pre-order it, but I was like, nah, let's see what happens. But yeah, I can we definitely could, go ahead. And, a saw book. We can add. Yeah, a I, I, book. yeah, I'm a big fan of the saw since 2010. So I have a lot of his work. Yeah, so y'all ain't all this. Don't you don't, don't call me dumb, bro. <laughs> No, don't call me dumb. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you're going to come out of the bag, call me dumb. Oh, yeah. And, and put sugar on top of it. on for the long. <laughs> What'd you say, Geeks? No, my, my bad, bro. I ain't say shit. Oh, shit. Okay, bro. Did you want to say something, Geeks? Because we're going to wind down, and you know. Oh, okay. I guess. Now you might be busy yeah yeah um the focal point was josh josh you got anything that you want to add to the conversation before we we call it man um, yeah um you know, you know I, I i did ask for a neutral platform you know what i'm saying now that was one of the prerequisites that i you know 
that, that I asked for. Um, I mean, <coughs> excuse me. Hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whether it can be, you know, fair and unbiased. Where we won't have the, the I don't know what what do you call. It? I guess the speaker and and the moderator per se mm-hmm. yes. being the same thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Makes sense to but, me. Uh, it's rather logical. Yeah. Um. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, I mean, I I, I kind of had fun. I, I I ain't like listening to him ramble along for like twenty or thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying about nothing. But other than that, I had fun. You know, <laughs> I had fun. Uh, but uh, I appreciate. Our supporters, I, I appreciate Team Osiris, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? That, that's pretty much it, man. Team Osiris on the horizon. Most definitely, man. Uh, next time, Masai, don't take three years. <laughs> when you get punched, you can't wait three years to punch back, bro. Thanks. We you already know. moved on. Took you three years, brother. Hmm. Wonder why. Mm. New book? Yep. Promo. Yep. Mm. Yep. Oop, did I say that? Okay. Yep. I'll say it. <laughs> New book. I'll say it. It wasn't ready. I'll say it. <laughs> uh, everybody wants their debates right around when their book's coming out. Mm-hmm. Jabari versus Garfield. New book? First book? New book. Ooh, Garfield. I can't wait to read your book, boy. Yeah, as soon as she opened the pre-orders, I'm not I'm paying gunning for it. I'm a bootleg that motherfucker, so I'm not paying. As soon as she opened the pre-orders, <laughs> I'm gunning for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna rip that shit off the net, homie. <laughs> Dark web, homie. Dark <laughs> web, here we come. <laughs> I'm talking shit, Garfield. I'm, I'm just fucking with you, man. I support your book, man. Hey, I'm tripping. <laughs> it's all in fun, man. And um, we do appreciate each and every one of you guys. You know, um, we didn't even know this team of the Cyrus thing was going to be like this. It developed a lot of, like, really, like, lifelong friendships. I think we're going to be friends forever, man. It's just it's kind of crazy how this shit developed. We had more fun just being able to keep in touch with each other than actually yeah, right. live streams and all that. That's cool. Right. We just enjoy each other's uh, company. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just try to share that with all of you guys out there on the internet. Um, uh, whether you like us or not, whether we're right or wrong, is really not a big concern. It's all about the spice of life. So with that being said, I'm a raw squad, man. Get your dupes up. Put them up. Get your gloves. What's up? Let's get some Mayweather shit going here, man. You know, let's go. Main event. Let's get it cracking. With that being said, this is Team Osiris. We are always and forever will be on the horizon. We out. Let me talk to you later. Peace.